Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for watching another Photoshop animation tutorial. This is another one from my free ebook called Getting Jiffy With It, where I'm showing how to make some fun Photoshop animations that can be used for a bunch of different projects uh, that you can kind of customize or use to templates as your own. If you stumbled on this from YouTube, you can find the ebook and the images. I got them all for free from Unsplash, uh, but you can also get them from my website, codepeterson.com. I have everything there in the free loot section uh, where you can download a zip file that has all of this stuff in there. Um, if you want to watch the video and follow along, you can. If you want to use the ebook and follow along, you can. If you want to follow both, uh, that's fine. I try to make sure that this and the book kind of go together uh, neatly and as close as possible because some, some of the steps, it's kind of hard to put into words, a little easier to show. So uh, again, hope you enjoy it and hope we have some fun putting together this one from the chapter called Off the Record. We're going to make an animated vinyl record. So let's get to it. 1200 pixels by 675 pixels for the size, 72 for the resolution because it's just going to be a digital animation. And we have RGB color 8-bit, and I'm going to click Create. All right, here's our canvas, so we're ready to get this thing going. Uh, once we get in here, uh, I'm going to use my rectangle tool over here in my tool section, and I want to create a rectangle. Uh, once I draw this on here, I do want the corners to be sharp, so you may have to adjust the... Um, the curve of those corners if you need to. Uh, you can also do that over here in your properties panel on the right hand side. And for the size of this, you know, you can kind of eyeball it, but I'm going to go 450 by 450 pixels. That looks pretty good. And I do not want there to be a stroke, so that's important. I want there it to be transparent. And the color doesn't really matter at this point in time. It's just there to show us where it is at. So we have that on there, and once we have that placed, we're now ready to bring in our first graphics. So I'm going to go to my folder here. You can either go File, Place, Embedded, or you can click and drag your image on here. I'm going to use the one of all the instruments, and I'm going to size this to where it's pretty close to the size, to the height anyways, of the square. I don't want to force fit it in there because then it's going to distort my image. If you have some album art that you have made or you created a graphic for like a Spotify playlist or something like that that you would rather use or if you want to create uh, your own album art for this, by all means do that. I'm just kind of using this as an example. Uh, so I have this picture right here and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and if I move my cursor over here in the layers panel and I put it right between the picture in the rectangle, you'll see it turns into a square with a bent arrow. And while holding down the Alt key and clicking with the mouse button, it'll fit that or it'll clip it so that that shape or that picture is inside that shape on there. Uh, so once that is set up, then I can Control T again and I can kind of fit this in there as best as I can. And that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get it. And I think this will work good for what I'm wanting to use this for. Once I have that done, I'll make a new layer above the uh, art. I'll go back to my folder, or you can go File, Place, Embed. And I'm going to bring in this old paper texture. All right, so I'm going to press Enter to place it. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then click in between these two layers to put this paper in there and you know, just kind of get it to be about the size to where I get a good texture in there. So maybe something like this where I see a little bit of wear here down at the bottom of the sleeve that the vinyl record would be stored in. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Uh, obviously, I want to be able to see the graphic underneath this. So I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer. So with the layer selected, I could go here where it says normal. I'll click there. And if I go down here to overlay, overlay looks good. I get my nice texture from the paper, and I can still see the graphics. And this is 
exactly the kind of look I'm looking for. Also to stay organized and just it's a good practice, I'm going to rename these layers. So the rectangle, I'll double click on rectangle one on the name of it. I'll call this one sleeve shape. And then in the next one, I'll call this one sleeve graphic. And the one above it, I will call sleeve texture. Uh, I want this to have a little bit of a look like it's a mock-up or, you know, like it's an actual sleeve. So I want to go to the layer style of the sleeve shape. Double click there and open up my layer style. And I want to select down here at the bottom on the left hand side of the layer style window, drop shadow. And in here, I want the blend mode to be normal and for the color to be black, the opacity is going to be 60. The angle, I don't really want it to be just a 90 degree, so I'm going to go 132 degrees just to kind of have it off, off at an angle, like the light's coming from an angle and casting the shadow down here. And then uh, for the distance, I'm going to have be 1 because it's just sitting right on top of the table or a shelf or something. And for spread, I'll have, I'll keep it at four. And for the size, I'll keep that at five pixels. Looks good. Uh, so with that, I'm ready to continue. I'll click OK. Uh, I am done with the sleeve for right now. And again, you can get as much detail with the art with that if you want. Just when you're done, you hold down the Alt and click and then put it into that shape. And then, and that's fine. So uh, I'll select... All of those layers you can control select them all or click on the top one and hold shift and click underneath it and then I'm gonna go down here to the bottom where there's this folder click it and it's gonna put it into a group called group one I'm gonna change that group name to sleeve contents all right, and then if I have the sleeve contents selected I can click and move this around wherever and it keeps everything together at any time, I can click that little arrow and expand the contents of that group. So it just helps me to be organized and I don't have too much clutter there in my layer style. So um, that looks pretty nice. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to make the actual vinyl record, the thing that's going to be spinning. So let's make a new layer and go back over here to our shapes. And I want to select the ellipse tool. And I'm going to draw a circle. If you hold down the shift button while you click and drag, you'll draw a perfect circle. Uh, and you don't have to worry about how perfect it is. Uh, the size of this circle, um, basically just as long as it's a little bit smaller than, than the uh, sleeve so that it would look like it would actually fit in there. That's all that really matters, I guess. Uh, so mine, this happens to be 439 by 439. Uh, yours may differ a little bit, and that's fine. So we got the circle put on here, and I want to fill this up with noise uh, so we can make our like record tracks in there. To do that, make sure your colors and your color selector on the left-hand side at the bottom of your tools are black and white. And then we want to go up here to Filter and select Noise and then Add Noise. It's going to ask you here if you want to convert it to a smart object or rasterize. Most of the time I encourage non-destructive editing, but in this case I do want to rast I do want to rasterize this. So see I almost caught myself not wanting to because I so many times caution people not to do this. But in this case we want to. It'll bring up the add noise window. Uh, the amount is 200%. For the distribution I want it to be Gaussian. And for monochromatic I want that selected. And then I'll click OK. All right, so we got our noise. Now I want to like rotate that noise around to look like little circular streaks that are going through that. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the control button on my keyboard, move my cursor into my above my uh, little thumbnail preview of that circle for ellipse one. And then I'm going to click in there. When I do that, it's kind of hard to see because of the noise probably on the screen, but I have the old marching ants going around uh, my 
my noisy circle there. So that works good for that. And uh, then to rotate those streaks around, I want to go up to Filter, Blur, and Radial Blur. And Radial Blur window comes up amount 50, the Blur method spin, and I want the quality to be best. And then I'll click OK, and now we can see we're starting to get these circular lines around the outside. Uh, I will use Control D to deselect and make the, the dotted line go away around the outside, otherwise that's going to cause me some problems. And it still doesn't really look like a record. So to do that, uh, I'm going to use, with my ellipse layer still selected, Control L, shortcut to bring up my levels. And this allows you to make the darks darker or the lights lighter and to kind of come to move that contrast in between, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So in here, for the input levels, I'm going to move the left value to 100, and the middle value, I'll just leave it 1 for right now, and on the right value, I can bring this one down to 120, and that does give me some grooves in there, but it is awfully light. I want to darken it up a little bit uh, to look like an actual vinyl record. So probably the easiest way to do that would be to adjust our output levels. So I'll leave the first value at zero, but the second one, if I bring this down to 110, this darkens this up, and I'm starting to get the look uh, that I wish with that on there. Uh, so I will click OK now, and I am going to go into the layer style of this ellipse layer, so I'll double click here, and what I want to use is some bevel and emboss just to give this a little bit of a 3D edge to it. It's not going to be real obvious, but just enough to, to kind of make it stand out a little bit on there. Uh, so for the style, I'm using inner bevel. Technique is smooth. The depth I have as 60. If you want to change it up to 70, that might not be a horrible idea. Probably just depends on the... Uh, size of the circle that you're using for your vinyl. Uh, for the direction, I'll leave it at up, and the size is going to be 5, and soften is going to be 0. Angle 132, altitude 30, screen and multiply uh, for the highlight and shadow modes respectively, and both of them at 50%. So with that, uh, that looks pretty good and gives me that 3D look to it. So now I'm going to click OK to close out of that layer style. All right, now what I want to do is because these circles are on here and that looks pretty good and I like that bevel and emboss on there. But in order for me to be able to animate this, I have to actually convert this back to a smart object. So I'm going to right click over here in my layer style and I'm going to select convert to smart object and now I have this on here. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good like that. Um, now I want to add a couple more uh, effects to it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So I want to go back into the layer style. And the reason why I'm doing these effects after the fact of converting it to a smart object is because I want the record to animate, but I want the glare off the record that I'm going to put on there, and I want the shadow underneath to stay in the same location. So I'm going to put these as a layer style, and that's going to allow that to happen. Uh, so with this, I will go over here to Gradient Overlay. I'm going to click on Gradient Overlay. And in here, we have uh, all these options for Gradient Overlay. I'm not going to... I'll tell you what. To begin with, I am going to bring... Uh, the opacity up to 100% just to start with because it'll help things to be seen easier in a little bit. And then I want to click this drop down menu. And over here, there's a little plus. I'm going to click on this plus. And I want to add a new gradient. And so this one, uh, I could call it record reflection. And then I'm going to click OK. All right, and it's going to put this 
gradient underneath all these folders it'll be down here it'll be the last one on here so when I move my cursor over it if you're not hundred percent sure I can move my mouse over it and it says record reflection so I'll click that then I'll click out here to exit that tiny little window and now I want to edit that gradient or I want to create that gradient so next to the word gradient I have a little preview rectangle here if I click there it's going to open up my gradient editor and I don't worry about this stuff at the top but here I have this little preview in here and it shows it's going from black to transparent I'm going to change that a little bit later um, but for right now it's okay like that and if I I can add more stops each one of these places where the gradient changes colors or opacity is called a stop and so if I click like right under there you see where the cursor turns into a finger pointing I can click there and now I created a new stop and I can even type in the location in there uh, so I'm gonna type in 50 because I want that one to be um, didn't mean to close out I want that one to be right in the middle uh, then I want to put in like two more stops to the left and to the right so I'm gonna click here and here and then I'll click over here and here and then I'm just gonna kinda of space these out you can always change these values however you want them uh, you know at another time it's nothing that's like permanent or anything but I do want them fairly evenly uh, spaced out uh, so that it's fairly even so that looks pretty good for right now uh, what I'm trying to accomplish and then I want to change the colors of some of these so I'll leave the first one as black but then I'm gonna click on the second one here I'm gonna click on it and here it says color so I'm gonna click in there and I'm gonna select white and then I'm gonna click OK and then I'm gonna leave this one as black this one I'm gonna to switch to white so I'm gonna do this on every other one so so we are alternating between black and white in there alright so that looks pretty nice um, the other thing I want to do because obviously this isn't going black to white it's going black to white to transparent to white to transparent so if I click on the far right hand stop over here I can change the opacity move it up to a hundred and then that's going to change those spots in between to be solid black and solid white okay that's starting to look right so now I'm going to click OK to close my gradient editor and uh, as I look at this now I can change the blend mode to lighten okay and that's gonna allow some of that to show through there uh, I'm also going to change the opacity of this to 50 percent that looks a little bit better uh, for the style I'm gonna click on this and I want to select reflected actually not reflected I want to go angle there we go that's what I'm talking about so now I have uh, kind of this look of like what something that would circular might have its reflection look like on there um, it doesn't matter if you have this as reverse checked or not because it is like a repeating pattern in there so to speak uh, for the angle I'm just gonna keep mine at 110 and uh, I do have a line with angle selected and I have the scale at 150 percent now your um, reflection might not be centered on there so what you can do is if you have this layer style window to the side or this menu to the side I can move my cursor over my um, canvas and I can click and drag and I can position that that mouse and move that gradient manually to where to close to where I want it to be so now um, it's starting to look a lot better starting to come together right uh, so let's click OK or no actually before we click OK we should add one more uh, I want to bring in my drop shadow here so uh, for the drop shadow I have this selected and 
normal is fine uh, the opacity is fine the angle I'm gonna keep the same I'm gonna increase the distance a little bit because I want this record to look like it's sitting up a little taller than what a, a cardboard sleeve might the record is thicker uh, so I'm gonna type in the number three here that gives me a little bit of some more shadow there and a little more 3d depth in that and then uh, spread I can keep that at four and size I can keep that at five so now now for reals this time I'm done with this one so I will click OK and uh, with this here I can change the name of this layer to um, uh, I could call this one vinyl shape I guess since I called the other one sleeve shape so that's vinyl shape all right so next thing to put on this if we're building our way up here I need a like a label on here so I'll create a new layer and I'm gonna go back over here to my ellipse tool and the color of this ellipse doesn't really matter I'm gonna choose yellow or orange yellow orange uh, so that it shows up here so you can see it easier it's gonna be covered up anyway and the size of this again you can kind of eyeball it but I think I'm going to go with 135 by 135 and that looks pretty good now if I want to center this in my vinyl record I can hold down the control button and click in the thumbnail of my vinyl shape layer to put that dotted rectangle around the outside of it and then I can go here to my ellipse one make sure that is selected but I have the dotted rectangle around the vinyl shape and then I can go up here to layer and align layers to selection and I want to choose uh, vertical center and then I can go back up here to layer and align layer to selection and go to horizontal centers and now I have that right in the middle so that looks pretty good I can use control D to deselect that vinyl record all right so uh, the shape right there that ellipse one I can rename that as label shape and right above that layer I'll make a new layer and just like we did uh, with the with the sleeve I can bring in this guitar handle so you can drag resize this as close as I can just to to get me close to it there we go and then holding down the alt key and clicking between those two layers I fit it in the circle then I can use control T to resize this to get the size that I want it to be I'm not going to put it in there perfectly centered just a, maybe a little bit off to the side like that I think that'll look good and I can rename this layer here to label graphic all right so label graphic this looks good this back here is all weathered and this looks not weathered all right so I want it to look less perfect in there so to do that I can go up here to image adjustments and hue saturation I have my hue saturation window here and then I'll bring the saturation all the way down to make it essentially a black and white picture and then I will click OK then I'll go back up here to image and adjustments and I want to find the one that says color balance so I can use this to adjust uh, the color balance of this image so with the uh, first value I might bring this up to the red section uh, to increase it to 50 the center one I'll leave where it's at and then the third one I want to bring this down to the yellow section I'll go minus 40 and now uh, it's a pretty close match in there so I'll click OK if I wanted to I could have brought in an old paper texture for that also uh, but I think I like how this looks right here and this is going to be spinning around anyway uh, so I, I think it's not necessary to have the texture for that 
but you may disagree and feel free to, to make it your own. Uh, once we have that there, then I can make a new layer. And then this one is going to have an ellipse. This one will be a white, a white ellipse. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here. Make it easier to work with. Draw a white ellipse in there. This will be like the hole in the center of the record in there. You can use those smart guides to kind of help you. Those purple lines are kind of useful in there. So that's always nice. Um, and that is looking pretty good. Um, wouldn't be a bad idea to add some detail to this ellipse in here. So I might call this layer hole. And in the whole layer, I'll open up that layer style and I will use uh, some inner shadow in there. So I'll click inner shadow. Blend mode is normal uh, for the opacity. I think 90 works well for that. And then uh, once we have that done, the angle, we obviously want to keep the same. Uh, for the distance, I think three looks good. Choke at zero and size at seven. I, I do think that looks pretty nice like that. So it gives us that look like this hole is going through the record. And then I'll click OK. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, I do need to uh, convert this label to a... Um, I don't know, to its own smart object in here. So you can do this kind of a couple different ways. We could leave the hole as is. That's probably fine. Um, so that way the shadow's in there the same way. But I will select my label graphic and my label shape. And then I'm going to right click on one of those two and convert to a smart object. Right, and so there I have this smart object here, which is the label graphic, which is going to rotate because it has to be a smart object to do that. And then the vinyl shape is going to be underneath it and it's going to be rotating. But because the gradient overlay, that, that reflection, and the shadow are layer styles, they're going to stay in the same spot. So that way... We don't have like a moving shadow around the outside. It'll look a little more realistic that way. And then the hole will stay in the same spot, which is fine. And uh, basically, we'll just keep the shadow in the same spot. Okay. Um, minor details here before we, before we animate this. Uh, we can actually put all those into their own layer or into their own group and I'll call this vinyl contents and I'm gonna put a gradient overlay over this background layer so make sure you have black and white for the color selected here in your tools section in the color selectors there and then I'm going to click the little lock in our background layer. It's going to change the name to layer 0. And I will just call this layer table. It's like it's sitting on a white table or something like that. And we'll go into the layer style. And we'll go to gradient overlay. And up here for the blend mode, I will use normal. And for the gradient in the drop down menu, I'll click here. And I'll scroll up in all these options. I have all these presets. I have a basics folder, and I want to select the one that goes from black to transparent. So that's selected. Uh, for the style, I will select radial. And in my preview, it shows it's darker in the middle. I want it to be lighter in the middle, so I'm going to select reverse. Now it makes it lighter on the outside. Angle's fine where it's at. Scale is 150. I want it to be as big as possible. 
And then for the opacity, I'm going to change that down to 10%. It looks like there's nothing there, but if you toggle it off, you actually can see what big a difference that it makes to have just 10% there. So I'll use 10% uh, for that, and then I'll click OK. So now would be a good time to move these elements around uh, before we start animating this. So with my sleeve contents, I might select that group and use Control T to just rotate it a little bit on there. And with the vinyl contents, I'll select that and I can move this right here. So it's kind of up to you how you want to position this um, or what you want it to look like. But I think this looks good here. Just kind of keep in mind this is going to be the moving part. So that's where people are going to have their eyes drawn to most of the time. Uh, the other part too was in this vinyl contents now that I think about it. If I, I converted this label graphic to a smart object and if I use control T I can see it kept all this data uh, from the rest of the guitar picture. So to get rid of that, because that might cause me some problems when I want to rotate the label, is I will right click and I'm going to rasterize that label graphic layer and then I'm going to right click it and I'm going to convert to smart object. So now to animate, I will go up to window and timeline and then I have my timeline panel down here and I want to create a video timeline. If yours doesn't show this option, just click the drop down menu and you'll be able to select it from your choices and then click the button, create video timeline. And I have all of my layers here. So let's expand our vinyl contents and I will make sure that I have label graphic expanded and vinyl shape expanded. Once that's there, then I'll make sure this blue handle is on the left hand side and I'm going to start with the label graphic because it's there first. I'll click the stopwatch next to transform and then I'm going to drag this over to the 1 colon 0 0 F mark and I'm going to use control T and hold shift while you rotate this and make it upside down. It's easier to tell when it's exactly upside down when you're holding shift because it'll lock to those positions. Uh, once it's there I'll press return. It adds another keyframe and then I'll bring this over to the 5 mark. And I'll go control T and I'll bring that right side up again and then press enter and then I will bring this over to let's say the 4 mark control T upside down and then I'll bring it over to the very end and control T okay let's move it back to the left hand side and we'll go down here to vinyl shape and I will go with the transform and then I'll go over here to the first position and then I'll just repeat that process but with the vinyl shape layer. So control T, I'll go upside down, control T, and I'm still going clockwise with all of these. And then go here to the last spot. Control T. And enter. So now when I bring this back, I can see where it's rotating at the same pace and at the same direction. And again, I see that glitching happening with my gradient. That's okay. It only does that in this mode. It won't do it when we publish the file. So. Right now I'm just looking at the rotation. Everything looks like it's moving properly. And I think this is going to work nicely. I can close out of that timeline. 
and then make sure you save this as a PSD so you can go back and make any necessary changes to it at another time and then I'm going to save this as an animation so to do that I will go file and export and save for web legacy it brings up this dialog box and I want this to uh, be five megabytes or less but the first thing is I need it to be an animation so I can go up here uh, select one of the GIF options and then down here in my lower left hand corner I will see like an actual um, file size in there that I that gives me something to gauge it off of and so there I am down to 5.781 still a little bit too big to post on Twitter for instance uh, so now I'm gonna go up here to colors and maybe try switching this to 64 and ultimately you're just looking for uh, that balance between file size and image quality uh, 64 on there brings it to 5.206 so then I might go down here to the image size and try 90 and now I'm below the 5 megabytes file size uh, last thing to check before we save make sure your looping options are forever um, and then I can click save and I'm going to name this just as final record animation and then I'll click save and here it is double click on this and there we have our animation so that is the process you know basically making your album art putting it on a sleeve finding a way to put it onto a label onto the vinyl record and possible extensions of this like I mentioned before you could use it to promote a Spotify playlist online you could use it to promote a podcast episode you're releasing or just make some album art for your favorite band uh, album or musician I hope you found this tutorial useful and fun I'll let me know what you think in the comments area and also post some ideas that you have for future projects that you would like to see done appreciate you watching and we'll catch you on the next video